All right, gang, here we go. This is for Chem 2 Unit 10. We're talking about uh, how to use ice tables and Q, the action quotient in this video. So lots of fun stuff. These skills that we're going to learn in this video are really, really important moving forward for the next at least two units. All right, we're going to talk about uh, specifically your first introduction into ice tables. And uh, this methodology of solving chemistry, chemistry problems is really, really important. All right, especially right now with equilibrium, obviously, but then also next unit when we get into acids and bases. All right, so uh, last unit or last video, we talked about equilibrium. What is it? We talked about the equilibrium constant. All right. Now we're talking about uh, how, what can we do quantitatively with this information? How do we use this equilibrium expression that we've developed in order to solve for initial and equilibrium concentrations for whatever our reaction may be? All right. These are the general steps that you're going to follow to solve all of these different problems. All right. Number one is you're going to tabulate all your known initial and equilibrium concentra concentrations. So essentially, you're going to develop a table. All right. Uh, for anything which has initial and equilibrium concentrations, you're going to calculate the change. All right. So you just subtract it to figure out what changed. Number three, use the balanced equation to find the change for all the other reactants and products. So you know you say like, oh, if that went up by two and it takes four of those and then that must have been you know gone down by four times as much or twice as much as the one that went up by two whatever all right uh, you'll see when we do a couple examples all right and it says use initial concentration and changes to find equilibrium concentrations of all species all right and then calculate the equilibrium constant by using the equilibrium uh, concentrations and then the equilibrium expression so <clears throat> let's do a practice problem this is a closed system initially containing 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd molar H2 and 2 times 10 to the minus 3rd molar I2 at 448 degrees Celsius is allowed to reach equilibrium. Analysis of this equilibrium mixture shows that the concentration of HI is 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3rd molarity. Calculate KC at 448. So this is important because it's the same temperature as up here uh, for the reaction taking place. Here's our reaction. All right. So they've already got it balanced for us. We got uh, hydrogen and iodide go into form hydroiodic acid or hydroiodide, all right? Hydrogen iodide, monoiodide, whatever, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> so, uh, so essentially, first step is we're going to tabulate our values. So this is our uh, initial concentration of hydrogen. This is our initial concentration of I2. And so this is what it initially contains, right? So the starting concentration of this would be zero. And then it says at equilibrium, we have this much HI. So we're going to take these values and we're going to throw them into our little equation here. All right, so these are our initial change equilibrium. All right, and these are the columns for each of these. I personally, when I solve these, I like to write it out like this. Uh, so I have the balanced chemical equation right above it. It makes it a little easier for me to follow what exactly is going on. But this is essentially the same idea. All right, so initial, and then your change would go in here. So this is our tabulated value. This is what they gave us. Now we're going to figure out what would go here. Well, if this went from 0 to this, that means this would have to have gone up by 1.87 times 10 to the minus third. All right, does that make sense? All right, <clears throat> and then these guys over here, well, these would be negative because they're reactants, okay? And so that means uh, for every two of these you make, you used one of these, or for every one of these you make, you made half of these. So these two values here would simply be 1.87 times 10 to the minus third divided by two, right? And then 1.87 times 10 to the minus third divided by two. Okay. And then to solve for at equilibrium, all we have to do is take our 1, and then just it would take this row plus this row, and then that equals that row. Okay, Pretty easy. So we take 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd minus this, and then and that equals that, and we throw that in there. And that's essentially what they do here. So that's, that's your difference. There's your change. So that's this value, the 1.87 divided by 2, gives you those guys there. All right, And then that's your final. Cool. So then in order to solve for our equilibrium constant, remember H2 plus I2, okay, is an equilibrium with HI, 2HI, excuse me, all right, so that means our equilibrium concentration would be equal to, remember this is what we learned last time, we do our products over our reactants, so it would be HI quantity squared over the concentration of H2 times the concentration of I2. All right, and then all we have to do is just take these values at equilibrium and plug them in, so this goes in right there, this one would go in there, and then this one would go in here, right? And that's what they've done here. 
So 1.87 times 10 to the minus third. There, remember, it gets squared. Okay, that's like the biggest problem that I see lots of students make. All right, and so the equilibrium expression is 51. And then remember, from this should be a capital K, capital K. But anyway, so remember, uh, if our K is bigger than one. That means that our products are favored because remember our K is the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants, right? So if our K is bigger than one, that means our numerator is bigger. So that means, uh, and if it's less than one, that means our reactants are bigger. So at equilibrium, we'll favor the right side, we'll favor the products. All right, let's do one on our own here. We'll do number two. <clears throat> the gaseous compound BrCl decomposed. Oh, that's too boring. Let's do let's do this guy here. All right, because this one has a little bit of a, a different wrinkle. All right, so uh, we discussed this equilibrium between N2O4 and O2. We just talked about that in the last video. Let's return to that equation. It says when 9.2 grams of frozen N2O4 is added to a 0.5 liter reaction vessel that is heated to 400 Kelvin and allowed to equilibrium, the concentration of this is determined to be that. Given this information, what is the value of Kc for this reaction? So we have N2O4 is in equilibrium with 2NO2. All right, we're going to set up our ice table here. So this is our initial, our change, and at equilibrium. All right, so it says initially, all right, we have 9.2 grams of N2O4. Now remember, this has to be concentrations, all right? Uh, so we got to convert our 9.2 grams into a molarity, all right? So we'll have our 9.2 grams, all right? So our grams go on bottom, our moles go on top, and we get a one mole, and then our grams. So we're going to have to figure out the molar mass of N2O4. So this has two nitrogens and four oxygens, okay? So we have two times 17.01 times or plus four times 16.00 all right so let's see what do I, I can't remember what it is so two times 17.01 plus four times 16 we get 98.02 all right so that's our molar mass 98.02 grams all right but that's not enough now we're in moles we need molarity so we're going to divide this by the uh, volume of our of our container so that's our 0.5 liters right there so we're going to take uh, 9.2 divided by 98.02 divided by 0.5 and I got 0.19 No, oxygen, sorry, nitrogen, this isn't working out right because uh, I screwed up. Nitrogen, I'm sure you're screaming at your computers at home. Nitrogen is 14.01, not 17.01. I don't know where the 17, 14.01. So 2 times 14.01 plus 4 times 16, 92.0. There we go, 92.02. All right, oops, I forgot to erase this guy. 92.02. Ah, there we go. 9.2. Now we take divided by 92.02 divided by 0.5. There we go. So now we got 0.9995. So this becomes 0 0.20 molar. Okay, so that's our initial concentration of N2O4 is uh, 0 0.20 molar. All right, the initial, and it says this is all we had to our closed reaction container. So that means the initial concentration of NO2 is zero. And it says uh, it's allowed to come to equilibrium and the concentration of N2O4 is determined to be this. So that means the equilibrium concentration is 0 0.057. All right, so in order to get our change, we are gonna just take 0 0.20 minus 0 0.057. So 0.2 minus 0.057. All right, and we get 0.143. Notice that I'm not really caring too much about sig figs at this point. All right, um, I rounded this one only because it was like four nines in a row, three nines in a row, and then a five. So it, it rounds up, and it's not really going to make a difference. But this guy here, I'm not going to go ahead and drop that three because uh, I don't want to round early and introduce uh, errors. All right, so let's think about this. So this is going to be going down by that much, right? And that makes sense. All right, <clears throat> now this guy here, when we look at the NO2, what's going on? Well, our NO2, okay, started at zero, so it's going to be increasing. So we know that's going to be increasing. We're going to come up to some value here. Well, it's going to be increasing by twice as much as this is decreasing because of this two right here. So that means our increase value will be two times that 
0.143. So its change is going to be 0.286. Now to find the equilibrium value, all we have to do is you know add these values together. So 0 plus 0.286, and you just get 0.286. All right. So at equilibrium in our container, we'll have 0 0.057. Uh, molarity N2O4 and 0.286 molarity uh, NO2. All right, so then to find the equilibrium constant expression, our Kc would be equal to the products over the reactants, so that's our NO2, and this would be squared over the concentration of N2O4. All right, so that, and then now we just plug everything in. So our Kc and our NO2 here is 0.286, and this guy squared over and 204, which is our 0 0.057. So our Kc is equal to 286 squared divided by 0 0.057, 1.4. All right, and hopefully that's an answer. Thank goodness it's an answer. So there's your answer right there. All right, and we don't do number two. That's pretty easy. All right, so that's pretty easy. But one skill that we need to be able to have is we need to be able to determine which way is our reaction going to go. Remember, we're going to have our uh, forward reaction. We're going to have our reactants, and they are in equilibrium with our products. Now, remember, at equilibrium, all that implies that the forward and reverse rate rates are equal to one another. It doesn't mean that we have equal amounts. It would be really nice to be able to predict uh, which side is our reaction going to go based on our starting conditions? So in order to do that, we use our reaction quotient. All right. Uh, so the reaction quotient is this capital Q, and it looks like the equilibrium constant K. All right. Meaning we use the same formula. Okay. As what we do for K. All right. That's what that means. But instead of using at for K, we use the values at equilibrium. For Q, we just use whatever the current conditions are, whether they be initial or somewhere in the middle or whatever. So our Q value is going to be some other value. Now, our Q could be equal to K, and that would just mean that we're at equilibrium. All right. So all you do is just take your current conditions, plug them into your equilibrium expression, and whatever you get, that's your Q value. All right. Now, based on your Q value, you uh, you can tell which way your reaction is going to go, either towards the reactants or towards the products. All right. So nature is always going to go towards this state here where Q is equal to K. It's always going to try to go towards equilibrium. All right. So uh, essentially what we're saying here, and you can, there's two ways to go about this. All right. Um, there's either memorize this stuff here or think about it. So let's just think about it real quick because that's always what I prefer. I hate memorizing things. So let's just, pref uh, let's just think about this real quick. You know that to calculate Q and K, your Q um, is equal to the concentration of your products over the concentration of the reactants. All right, And the K is the exact same idea, concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. All right, So if you plug in your initial concentrations and you have your K value, and you see that your Q value is smaller than your K, that would imply that your reactant, your denominator, is too big. Okay, So if you re reactants are too big, that means your reaction is going to proceed towards the products. Because remember, these two values, they need to be equal to each other. So if your reactants is too big, that means your denominator is too big. All right, We need to reduce your denominator or increase the numerator. And both happens, right? So you'd go towards the products. So you get less reactants and more products. Fly, vice versa, if your Q was too big, that means your numerator is too big or your reactants are too small. All right, so your products were too big, so that means you're going to go in the reverse reaction. And that's exactly what these things say. If Q is less than K, it'll make it so to proceed towards the products. Right? And if Q is equal to K, you're at equilibrium, and that makes sense. Okay, and if Q is greater than K, that means uh, your reaction will go towards the reactants. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so now... This is where the rubber meets the road a little bit. We're going to do the same kind of idea of what we just talked about with ice tables. But now, instead of trying to calculate the equilibrium expression, now we're going to calculate the equilibrium concentrations uh, from given the equilibrium constant. Okay. So this is how it works. It's going to set up very, very similarly uh, to your ice tables. All right. But the big difference is... Okay, I mean, there's still ice tables, but the big difference is in the change in concentration row, we'll be using x's because that's what we're going to solve for instead. 
All right. So for example, so this guy here, we have a one liter flask and it's filled with one moles of H2 and two moles of I2 uh, given Kc and they give us this Kc right here, which is the same one we calculated earlier. It says, what are the equilibrium concentrations of H2, I2 and HI? So here's our reaction again. So here's our initial constant. This is our H2, this is our I2 and this is our 2HI. Okay, and they're in equilibrium and we get a little plus. Okay, so Here's our equal initial concentrations. It says a one liter flask so that our moles equal our molarity, which is nice. So we get one, two, and zero. Okay, all right. Um, so we weren't given any equilibrium concentrations. So in order to calculate this, we are going to just plug in these and use variables. All right, so we know that our reaction is going to proceed towards the right. It's going to proceed towards the products because there's absolutely no products here. Now, and you could convince yourself of this by calculating the cube for it. All right, but we know it's going to go to the right. So that means these two values here are going to go down by some amount. And they're going to go down by the same amount because their ratio is one to one. So we put a negative x here and here. And at equilibrium, with this, uh, the equilibrium concentration will just be whatever our one, the top row is added to the second row. So it would be 1 minus x and then 2 minus x, respectively. Now the product starts at 0, and then it's going to go up. But there's two of them for every one of these guys that are, that are used. So our increase is going to be 2 times our x value. Okay, So this guy is going to be this. All right. So now it's just a simple matter simple matter, right, of plugging these guys into your equilibrium expression. Your Kc is equal to your concentration of your Hi squared over the concentration of H2 times the concentration of I2. Remember, these are at equilibrium. So we're just going to take these values. You're going to plug the 2x in up here. So it will be 2x quantity squared over 1 minus x times 2 minus x, right? So we get this. And this is exactly what they've done here, right? So there's your equilibrium expression. And you just plug in these equilibrium values, all right? And then you can do some quadratic formula funness, all right? Set it equal to your Kc because they gave this to us right here. Whoops. Gave it to us right here. That's that 50.5. All right, so there's this guy. Solve for your x, and you get two answers. Now you got to think to yourself, well, which one makes more sense? Okay, with a quadratic formula, that always implies that you're going to have two intercepts, right? You're going to have two places that is a solution to your quadratic formula. Okay, and so we can't have both. That doesn't make sense. All right, so we got to decide, well, which one is more, uh, which one is more reasonable? So in order to do that, we got to think back to what we started with. Well, uh, we started with one molarity. Okay, so if our x value was 2.323, that would imply that we had a negative molarity of H2 when everything's said and done, and that just doesn't make sense. You can't have a negative concentration. All right, so therefore the 0.293 or 232 is not valid. So the only answer that's possible is the 0.935. Okay, all right, and then to solve for the equilibrium, all we do is plug these values in for x, and these would be our equilibrium concentrations. All right, <clears throat> so now we're just going to do some practice problems. All right, let's do practice exercise two here. It says at 1,000 Kelvin, the value of Kp for the reaction, uh, this, this, this is 0.338. All right, calculate the value for Qp and predict the direction in which the reaction proceeds. All right, here, let me move me up here so you guys can see. Value for QP and predict the, uh, the direction <clears throat> in which the reaction proceeds towards equilibrium if the initial partial pressures are these, 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 and these. So remember, to find Q, all we do is we plug it in to the same thing. Now notice that it's pressure, so we're not going to use concentrations. We're going to use our partial pressures. So it be the partial pressure of SO2. All right, and this guy would be squared because of this e this coefficient right here. All right, times the partial pressure of O2. All right, and it's just one of those divided by the partial pressure of SO3. Three, and this guy would be squared. All right, and we're going to take those guys and we're just going to plug it in. So partial pressure of SO2. So that'd be our 0.41 squared times the partial pressure of O2. So that would be uh, 2.5. And then the partial pressure of SO3, which is 0.16. And again, that would be squared. All right, so you take uh, 0.41 squared times 2.5 times 0.16 squared. And, ooh, or divided by, divided by 0.16. as like, that number is not what I got earlier. All right, so I got 16.41. All right, so we'll just say 16. So that's the value for Q. 
Okay, now we have to think to ourselves, well, which way is it going to lie? Because it, it wants us to calculate that Q, mission accomplished, but then it says also predict the direction in which the reaction proceeds towards equilibrium. All right, so we have to compare that to our K. So our Q value is greater than our K value. A lot greater, right? Our Q value is bigger than our K value. Our K value is only 0.338. All right, so if Q is greater than K, that means our numerator of our Q is too big. That means we have too many products. So that means our reaction will proceed to the left. All right, <clears throat> now let's try an I stable problem here. All right. Oh, let's see. Which one should we do? Um, we just did a partial pressure one. So let's do practice exercise one. I think this is it, yeah. All right, so we're just gonna blow through this one. I'll throw these guys back in here so we have some room to work. All right, so uh, for the equilibrium, Br2 plus Cl2 yields this. The equilibrium constant, Kp, is seven. If a cylinder is charged with BrCl at the initial pressure and the system is allowed to come to equilibrium, what is the final equilibrium pressure? All right, so I stable it up. So we got Br2 plus Cl2 is an equilibrium with 2 BrCl. We can write I, C, E. All right, so initial pressures, if a cylinder is charged with that, so initial pressures of these guys is zero. Well, that makes it really easy. We don't even have to calculate Q to figure out which way we're going to go. So we're already good. So this guy is going to go down by some 2x. And we say it's 2. We just, the, If you don't quite understand what's going on there, just literally take the coefficient and put it in front of your x's. Super easy. So minus 2x, and then this is going to go up by some x, and this is going to go up by some x. So at equilibrium, we'll have some x, some x, and 1 minus 2x. All right. Now all we do is take our equilibrium expression. So our Kp is equal to the partial pressure of BrCl, and this would be squared, okay, divided by the partial pressure of Br2 times the partial pressure of Cl2. All right. So now we just plug everything in. All right. So our Kp value, well, that's 7. 7.0, and then our partial pressure, okay, is, so BRCL, is the, that's the 1 minus 2x squared divided by our x squared, okay, or, and I kind of stepped, skipped a step there, because our PBR is x and our CL2, PCL2 is x, so x times x is x squared. Now, <clears throat> we just have to do some algebra here, so uh, these are both squared, so we'll take the square root of both sides, all right, so we get uh, root 7 is equal to 1 minus 2x over x. All right, so we can multiply both sides by x. So we get uh, root 7x is equal to 1 minus 2x. Brrr, why? Why, 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 <laughs> Okay, uh, so you can do the algebra on your own. All right, so x here is going to be equal to 0.22 atmospheres. Honestly, the best way to do this, in my opinion, is take your graphing calculator, graph it, and figure out where x is equal to each other. You know, plot one as a square root of 7x, and then the other one is 1 minus 2x. Figure out where they intersect each other. That's Honestly, if I was doing it, that's probably how I'd do it, if I didn't know the answer ahead of time. So anyway, so you get x equals 0.22 atmospheres. Now, you might be tempted, ah, there's our 0.22 uh, mission accomplished. Nah, no, not quite, because that's not what it asked for. It says the system is allowed to come to equilibrium. What is the equilibrium pressure of BRCL? All right, well, the equilibrium pressure of BRCL is going to be equal to 1 minus 2x. So you take your 1 minus 2 times your 0.22. All right, so it's 1 minus 0.44. All right, and you get 0.56 atmospheres. All right, so you, there's your answer right there. So there you go. There's that. that it's so much fun. We did it. We did ice tables. So do lots of practice. This stuff is really, really important to be able to do on your own. Um, it's kind of tricky, but the nice thing is you don't really need to know a lot of chemistry in order to do them. You just need to be half decent at figure out what's going on and um, do some and be able to do algebra. All right. So anyway, do your practice problems. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the flip side.